Odyssey, and today we're going to explore Bakasana. This sequence is largely based off of an article that I wrote for Yoga International, and I'll leave a link for that below. And so the premise of this article and this practice is to prepare for Bakasana, but without overindulging in wrist extension. So a lot of times we'll prepare for the wrists in poses like chaturanga or plank, and so then the wrists get really tired by the time you actually get into the arm balance. So we'll try to lay off the wrists a little bit more in this practice. There will be some active wrist extension throughout the practice and lots of props. So today we're going to get started. You can have a chair if you have it. If you have a wall space, we'll also be doing a version of a Vakasana with the wall. Uh, two blocks, a strap, a blanket, and possibly a cat. All right, so let's get started. Come on down onto your back. And so you can have the knees bent or the legs straight as you wish, however is most comfortably with, comfortable for you in this initial position. And so get a feeling of how the back of your body makes contact with the floor. Feeling all the surfaces of the body that touch the floor. And so Bakasana is a shape where you are very compact. And so in Shavasana, there's a little more expansion. If you're in constructive rest, there may be some of that feeling of compactness. So be aware of that in your body and knowing sort of where we're heading. And become aware of your breath, feeling the sensation of your breath as it moves in and out of your body. And notice where you feel the process of breathing. So is there movement high up in your chest? Can you feel it along the sides of your body from as far up as underneath your underarms to as far down as your hips? And maybe you can feel movement in the abdomen as well as in the bowl of the pelvis. into your back body so that when you breathe, can you feel movement in the back body? So Bakasana, again, because the position is compact, there isn't too much space to breathe in the front body. So can you feel, as you inhale, that the back moves down towards the floor? And then as you exhale, you find your natural curvature once again of the lower back, the navel drops down. And be aware of this sensation, almost like a jellyfish-like movement, but of your back body. And that's Wally the walrus, if you can hear him. And maintain the steadiness of your breath and some awareness of the breath in the back. Bend both of your knees so that your feet are on the floor if they're not already. And bring your right knee in towards your chest. Place your hands around the front of your shin or behind your thigh. And take a moment to feel the um, thigh in this position. And as you exhale, lower your left foot down to the floor and switch on over to the right. Pull your right knee into your chest. So right now your knee is in knee flexion and your hip is in hip flexion. And so you're creating that compact shape. If you pull your other knee into your chest, okay, then this knees to chest position really is very similar to your Bakasana. So let's try a reclined version. Press the inner edges of your feet together. Keep pulling your knees in towards your chest, but then notice as soon as you let go of your knees, 
Is there a little bit of expansion? Do your thighs come away from your chest? So can you keep pulling these in? You may notice that the, ab the abdomen turns on quite quickly once the hands leave the uh, legs. And you press your palms up towards the ceiling. So again, this idea of active wrist extension, take your fingertips, move your fingertips up towards the ceiling, and then actively pull them back in the direction of your shoulders. So it's as if you were pressing the palms of your hands against the ceiling. And then again, straighten the wrists, bring the fingertips up towards the ceiling. You can feel some protraction in the shoulder blades. Reach the shoulder blades away from your spine. And then pull the fingertips back towards your shoulders. Press the heels of your hands up towards the ceiling, elongating the backs of your forearms. And then as you exhale, release your hands to your legs again. Draw the knees in, so we're finding that there's a little more passive hip flexion. And then exhale, lower your feet down to the floor. On an inhalation, pull the left knee into your chest. Take your left palm to the top of your thigh. So you're going to work some active hip um, flexion. I'm going to push my palm of my hand into my thigh. Push, 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 push. As if to push my leg forward. And I resist that movement as I pull my thigh towards my shoulder. And now release your left hand and see if you can draw the left thigh in a little bit more. And that space of the hip joint, right? You can really feel the loose of the muscles of the hip flexors engaging to maintain this um, more flexed position. So keep that flexed position, push the hand into the thigh, pull the thigh back into the chest. It's going to be a lot harder this time. And now release the hand and see if you can draw the knee in a little bit more. On an exhalation, lower the left foot to the floor and try the right side. Pull your right knee into your chest, place your hand on the top of your thigh, press the thigh away from you as you pull your thigh in towards your chest. Maintain that resistance. Release your hand and pull the thigh in. And then do it again. Push the thigh away as you pull your thigh in towards your chest. Release your hand and see if there's a little more movement. And now lower your right foot to the floor. Switch sides again. Pull your left knee into your chest, but now offset the leg a little bit. So now it may be, be even more spacious, right? So you're abducting the leg. So the thigh is slightly to the left of your ribs. And do that again. So now you're going to push the hand into the thigh, pull the thigh back up into the hand, press, 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 press against each other. And then lift the hand, draw the thigh in. On an exhalation, lower the left leg down. And straighten the left leg and the right leg for a moment. Even though you've worked your left hip flexor, does your left leg feel a little bit longer than your right? And bend your knees again. And we'll come on over to the right side. Pull your right knee into your chest. Offset the leg a little bit. Take the palm of your hand to the thigh. Push the thigh away as you pull the thigh back in. Hip flexor muscles are contracting. Release the hand, pull the leg in, and hold there. Can you keep your breath steady as you continue to hold the hip flexion? And then exhale, release the leg, straighten both legs for a moment, and again, do they feel a bit more even? Bend both of your knees now, placing the soles of the feet onto the floor. Roll to one side and come onto all fours for tabletop. So in your tabletop position, have your hands about shoulder width apart. They could be even wider. Okay. And on an inhalation, lift your head, chest, and sitting bones up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, round your spine into cat, pulling the abdomen in and up, protracting the shoulder blades, moving them away from the spine, and dropping the chin down. And inhale, follow up with your cow. And then exhale into cow. 
And now you'll take it a step further. So as you inhale, you'll lift up into cow. Exhale into cat, rounding the spine as you would in Bacasana. And then super cat, push down through your hands, push down through the tops of the feet, hover your knees. And then inhale, lift the head and chest up into cow. Exhale into cat. And then continue the exhalation into super cat. So if that's a lot on the tops of your feet, you can always do this with the toes top under. Okay. Push down, cat. Hover just a little bit so you're not lifting too far up away from the floor. And then another option for this could also be seated, right? But if you're doing the seated version, instead of lifting um, the knees away from the floor, you would actually lift your feet away from the floor. So it's almost like um, a cross-legged Navasana. And then come back to a long spine. So now we'll move into a segmental um, cat cow. So as you inhale, lift your sitting bones up. Then drop the belly down towards the floor. And start to find some movement in the upper back. Pull the chin back. And then lift the head. And now keep your head lifted as you start to round the spine. So this is really the important movement for Bakasana. The sitting bones move down towards the backs of the knees. You puff the lower back. And then start to puff the upper back without dropping the head. Push down into the hands. Spread the shoulder blades. See if you can round the spine a little bit more without dropping the head. Bakasana back. And then inhale, back through center. Sit your hips halfway back. Walk your hands over to the right about 45 degrees. And then sit the hips back and down. Lower your forehead. And you can lower your forehead down onto the floor or onto um, a blanket or a uh, block. And on your next inhalation, move through tabletop and repeat that same sequence. Sit your hips halfway back to half of your range of motion to child's pose, whatever that is. Then walk the hands out, then reach the hips back. Let the hands slide back, but they slide back with resistance so that you feel the sensation from the upper right arm down to your right hip. center, okay. walk your hands back up, grab your blocks. Okay. You're going to take your blocks and place them at the top of your mat. Okay. And you can come on to really any height of the blocks. And the tallest height will be the most intense. Okay. So sit the hips back into child's pose, reach the arms out in front of you, and bring your head between your ears. So again, you're moving into this bakasana-like shape. So your knees are deeply flexed, your hips are deeply flexed. The arms are in quite a different position than they are in bakasana, but they're straight. Okay. Then from here, so you can actively round the spine a little bit, so pull your sits sitting bones down towards your heels, round the upper back, and then with your hands, can you actively pull the fingertips back in the direction of your uh, shoulders. Then push through the hands. Take a breath through the side and the back of your body. And then lower the palms back down to the blocks and push the blocks down. So again, remember, this is that compact shape of Bakasana. So breathing, right, it's very difficult for me to breathe into the front of my body because my belly presses against my thighs. So really what I'm trying to access is the rebound, right, filling up the back side of the ribs with breath in order to be able to breathe more comfortably. So again, 
pull the fingertips back in the direction of your shoulders, push through the heels of the hands, and then as you inhale, inflate the back side of the ribs, and then exhale, feel the chest moving down towards the floor a little bit, perhaps the shoulders a little bit. And release the hands. Come on to all fours. Step your right foot forward. So the foot can go between the hands or, or between the blocks or to the outside of the blocks. Tuck your toes under and lift your left knee away from the floor. Okay. From here, I'm going to come onto my fingertips. And then if I'm okay here, then I start to bring my torso up. Right? I want to take my left hand to the top of my thigh so the heel of my hand comes right underneath my hip point. And then the rest of my hand comes onto the front of my thigh and I press the thigh gently back. On an inhalation, I lift my right hand up Pull my fingertips actively back towards my shoulder as I push forward through the heel of the hand. And on my exhalation, I'm going to release my hands and step my left foot forward. And inhale, lengthen my spine, step my right foot back. So now I'm on my left side. I walk my foot out just a little bit to the left. And I reach to the back of my right heel. And so again, take the right palm of the hand to the top of the thigh. So inhale, come up right. Take your left hand, bring your left hand out in front of you, and pull your fingertips back in the direction of your shoulder. Gently press the top of the right thigh back and squeeze the right buttock. Pull your left fingertips back in the direction of your shoulder. Then on an exhalation, release your hands to your blocks and step the right foot forward. So have your feet about hip bone distance apart, grab your blocks, and sit the hips back, and bend your knees. So very much like Utkatasana, okay? Then from there, lift your arms up and squeeze your blocks for this variation of Utkatasana. On an exhalation, release the grip and pull back forward. Inhale, bend your knees, lift the blocks, sit back. Utkatasana, and then perhaps you sit a little bit lower. And then exhale, fold forward. So again, finding deep knee flexion and hip, and hip flexion. Inhale, lift up, and sit back. Squeeze your blocks. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. So you feel some action going on in the forearms. On your exhalation, fold forward. And one more time. Inhale, lift up. Sit back, and as you exhale, press to stand in Tadasana. Okay. So now you can use the wall for balance. You can also do this freestanding, similar to what we did when we were lying on our back. Right? So we brought the palm of our hand to the thigh and do the same thing here. So I have my right hand on my wall, and my left hand will go onto the top of my left thigh. I push my left thigh down towards the floor, and at the same time, pulling the left thigh up and towards my chest. Press, 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 press. And then I'm going to lift my hand, lift my thigh, and see if I can hold it there. Then my added piece for an additional um, knee flexion, I'm going to straighten my leg a little bit, and then pull my heel back in the direction of my butt without letting my thigh drop. So keep my thigh up. Pull my heel out a little bit, and then actively work my heel back towards my buttock, and now release the um, left foot down. Switch sides so that you're on the right. Bend your right knee into your chest. Take the right hand to the top of your thigh. Push the thigh down as you pull the thigh back up into the hand. Then lift the hand, lift the thigh. Straighten the knee a little bit, and then pull with intention the heel back towards the buttock. And again, straighten the leg just a little bit, and then pull the heel toward the buttock. Keep the thigh lifted, and now lower your right foot to the floor. So now we're going to move on to come into a seated position. You can start with your blanket for this first round. Okay. Fold your blanket. 
it up. I like to sit a little bit higher. So I create a little cube. And grab one of your blocks. Okay. Train both of your legs along the mat and dandasana. And bend your left knee into your chest. Try not to use your hands in that same action. Pull the heel actively with intention towards the buttocks and place the left sole of the foot onto the floor. You know, walk my left foot out a little bit to the side so that the knee goes along the side of my body rather than a thigh to chest. Bend your right knee, place your block on the top of the right thigh. So you're elevating the height of the floor. Take your arms out in front of you. Place your inner arms, your inner elbows, onto the block and catch the block with the inner elbows. And then from there, you slide the foot forward again. Hug your block, lengthen your spine, and then squeeze your inner left leg in towards the side of your body so it doesn't flop out into the side like maybe Janu Shishasana. So you can inhale, lift your chest, and then as you exhale, start to find the Bakasana spine. Round the back, but keep looking forward to lifting the head. And then as you start to feel your left leg getting closer to your inner, uh, your outer arm, squeeze them into each other. Pull your inner thigh into your outer arm, and then press the outer arm back into the inner thigh. Squeeze your block. And then inhale, lift back up. Straighten both legs. You can keep the block or drop in. Bend your right knee. Place the right foot out to the side a little bit. And sit up tall to begin. And you hug the inner right leg in. As I exhale, I'm hinge forward from my hip a little bit. And then I allow for spinal flexion. Right? This is your Bakasana shape. And I pull my inner leg into my outer arm as I squeeze my block. Notice if you're here, right? And it's not that it's a bad position, okay? Because you do want your shoulder blades to move in all directions, but this can be just a little overcrowding, okay? So instead of just elevating the shoulder blades, can you actually push forward, can you protract your shoulder blades and move them away from the spine so that they broaden across your upper back. And inhale, come on up. Stretch your right leg forward. Okay, you can bend your knees, place your lock down, release your arms. It's a lot of work to hold in that position. Okay, come off of your blanket. If you need a softer surface, then open up your blanket. Otherwise, move it aside and take your block and place your block between the inner feet, so the uh, inner edges of your feet. So this is like Navasana, variation of Navasana. Squeeze the block between the inner legs. Sit back onto your sitting bones. And then see if you can hover your feet away from the floor. Squeeze the block. And then as you inhale, pull the thighs actively in, right? So passively, maybe I can be here, but actively, right? There's a little expansion there. I'm gonna take my hands out in front of me and see if I can bring my knees to my arms and pull my arms up towards my knees. Stay here for another breath. Then you can add by pulling your block down towards the floor. Right? And I find this to be very active and sometimes a little harder than Bakasana on my hands. Okay. And as you exhale, release the block. You can stretch the legs forward. Find some expansion after that position, and then we'll try it again. And so, what's kind of cool about being able to do the seated variation is that you can practice them together, right? If you're a teacher, you can have students that do the seated version and the balancing on the hands version and be able to almost cue it simultaneously. Almost, okay? Do it one more time. Take the block between the inner feet, pull the inner feet together, 
Rock back a little bit. Lift your block up. Pull the knees actively in, so active hip flexion. Take the arms to the insides of the legs, and then pull your knees up so that you make contact between the arms and the legs. Pull in, pull in, pull in, as you push forward and protract the shoulder blades. Okay? Actively take the fingers back towards the shoulders, and then you can add the block, pull the block towards the floor. And then roll down, stretch the legs out, move the block aside. So now we're going to take um, a variation of Bakasana to the wall. So the wall variation of Bakasana um, helps to take some of the weight off of the hands because you have an additional source to support your weight on. So it's not as weight bearing as, um, as a freestanding Bakasana, but, not, uh, but a little bit more than our chair variation and we'll do that variation right afterwards. So for this one, I like to be about my shin distance apart. So I tuck my toes under and that's about the length of my shin. So I want my hands to go right there. And it might be a lot to squat back from this position. So if you need a reminder of where the hands are going to be placed, you can take a strap and now I know, okay, I want the heel of my hands to be on that line, okay? So, right, heel of my hands come right here, my fingertips go beyond that. So you can feel my buttocks press against the wall, and then bend my knees, so that when I bend my knees, they come to the backs of my arms. Okay. And then from there, I'm gonna pull forward, so you have arms straight, knees bend, and they touch the backs of the arms. Then legs straight a little bit, and you bend your elbows so that you come closer down to the floor. There's a little more spinal flexion here too. Okay? So my hands a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I lift up onto the balls of my feet. That's going to give me some extra height. So now it's not even that my knees are behind, but now I can actually get my shins. Right? my shins to the backs of my arms. So from here, I shift my weight forward and feel the shelf of my arms. So the weight of my legs are on the backs of my arms. And as long as I feel secure with the placement of my left hand and my left shin on my upper arm, I'm gonna take my left foot to the wall. And I press my left foot into the wall lean forward a little bit more so my right foot gets lighter and then lift my right foot up and then from there you can start to straighten lift the belly protract the shoulder blades you can stay here maybe shift forward a little bit more not too much so the fingertips grip and then flex the feet then can you imagine the block between the inner feet pull the inner feet in and pull the block up towards your butt, the imaginary block. Okay. Then you can place the feet back onto the wall if they've left. Place your feet on the floor. Then straighten the legs. Open up the feet a little bit out to the sides. Rest your buttocks against the wall and take your fingertips forward. So like a wide legged and downward facing dog. And drop the head as your sitting bones rest against the wall. And to come out, walk your fingertips underneath you, reach your chest forward, walk your feet in a little bit and possibly a little bit away from the wall. Bend your knees, take your hands to your hips, and come on up to stand. Okay? So now we'll take a look at the chair variation of Akasana. So grab your chair and place your chair on the mat. You can have your blocks nearby. For some of you, you might need to uh, use the box. For others, the proportions will be fine where you place your hands on the floor. Start in a chair like a normal chair. You'll never sit in a chair again the same. Okay? And I like to sit far back 
and take my knees a little bit out to the sides. Okay? So this way, I can take the soles of my feet and place them on the chair legs. Okay? Then from there, so you have a little bit of that abduction, right? the legs are moving away, and that's going to give me room to put my torso through my legs. Okay? Then from there, you can place the hands on the ground. So I need a little bit of height, this might be a lot of height, but you'll see the difference, right? So if you were here, right, if I had super long arms and my hands were up here, then it would be hard, right, to try to lean forward and get more of a bacassana shape. So from here, I'm going to lean forward a little bit into my hands, okay, and this can be your bacassana, you can still work the same actions, pushing the hands down, it doesn't put as much pressure on the wrist, so if that's something that you're on the lookout for, then you have that. Okay. Another option is to move the feet away from the chair legs, keep the connection between the arms and the legs, and then see, can I pull my feet back? So that idea of the block between the feet, pull the inner feet in closer to each other, and then pull the heels up towards the back of the chair seat. I can remove the blocks, lay a little bit further down, place my hands down. I'm going to shift forward, but my buttocks is going to remain, well, my buttocks maybe not, but my thighs are still on the chair, but your buttocks may if you have um, more hip flexion, right? So I lean forward, hands back, I can feel the weight of my legs similar to the wall, okay? As soon as I feel the back, the weight, as soon as I feel the weight of the backs of my legs against the backs of my arms, then I can see if I can start to slip them back and pull them in. And maybe the inner edges come together, and then you push. Okay? If you're working a straight arm version, right, this may be a nice place for you to work that. And then place the feet down, heels on the chair, hands to the thighs, and come on up. So now, I'm going to rest from that compact position and move into an expanded version. So you're going to move your chair aside, grab your strap, okay, and have both of your blocks nearby. So come down onto your back, grab your strap, and loop the, uh, the heel, rather, of your right foot. And send your left leg forward. Take your strap over into your left hand and take your right hand, the palm of the hand, right back to the top of the thigh like you were doing, or even the middle of the thigh, um, like when we were doing your resistance work. So I'm gonna pull my heel towards me a little bit, but push my thigh away. Then take my leg about 45 degrees over the left side of my body, and I allow my left leg to turn down as well with this position. But what this hand is doing, it's helping to drop the thigh away from the abdomen so that my hip isn't curling up towards the side of my body. And you may feel that the lower right spine feels a bit more spacious with the traction of the hand pressing the thigh away. And inhale, bring your right leg back up through center, bend your right knee into your chest, and slide the right leg forward. And again, observe, you may feel some differences between the right and left sides. And come on over to the left side, put the left leg in, loop the heel of your foot. Reach the left heel up toward the ceiling. And hold on to the strap of your right hand. Take the left palm to the left thigh. And take the left leg over the right side of the body. My wall is right here, so I'm actually going to place my foot onto the wall. Okay, and I can push the inner edge. I could push the whole sole of the foot into the, into the wall. And at the same time, press my left thigh 
towards the front of the mat. And inhale, bring your left leg up through center, bend your left knee to your chest, remove your strap, and send your left leg forward. And notice if your legs have evened out a bit. And pay particular awareness to the lower back. Right? Is there a sensation of balance there after that slight twist? So now you're going to grab your blocks. I like to take one block in each hand, and you can determine the height, right? It's going to be different for everybody. Um, but whatever the height is, okay, you'll take the same height in both hands and sandwich the blocks underneath your hips from side to side. So I bend my knees, lift my hips up like bridge pose, and then take the blocks underneath, pushing them together so that they're even. Okay. And I rest my buttocks on the blocks. From there, there's a little bit of hip flexion still, okay. but it is more of an expanded sense of space than Vakasana. So you can stay here, or you can walk your legs out a little bit, so slowly coming into a more passive hip extension. Okay. For right now, I do like the soles of my feet to be on the floor. I have access to that motion, but you certainly can have the feet flex and the legs turned out. Okay. And then from here, it, take the palms of the hands again, hook them right underneath the hip points, and gently press the tops of the thighs down. So you felt that in your lunging practice. Revolve your palms up towards the ceiling. Let the upper arm bones drop. Maybe draw the shoulder blades in just a little bit, but don't squeeze them in towards each other. Okay, just so that it feels a little more natural. Okay. And let the upper arms rest. So now there's um, some passive extension of the shoulders. And be aware of the different sensation that this version of bridge pose offers. Vakasana, right? you're curled up into this tight ball, basically, and it's active. Right? You're actively flexing the knees, you're actively flexing the spine, you're actively flexing the hips. You're actively keeping yourself up and away from gravity, the effects of gravity. Whereas in this position, your whole body is lengthened. You're moving in the opposite directions in all of your joints, or at least most of them, right? And succumbing to gravity, you're allowing the effects of gravity to happen on your body. And you can stay here, or to come out, bend your knees. I recommend just stay here for a moment or two, especially depending on how long you've been in um, that variation of bridge form. And press your heels down, lift your buttocks up, remove your blocks. You can even go down a height, or right? you could um, move down to the second or the lowest height, rest there until you come all the way down to the floor. And then once you're down, settle the hips against the ground. And make your way into Shavasana. Reach your legs forward if there are any props that you'd like to use for your Shavasana, go ahead and use them. And any props that are nearby but that you're not using, see if you can move them out of your way so that you don't perceive them as much 
as you rest here in Shavasana. And so again, bring your awareness to the back of your body as it makes contact with the floor. Noticing any changes since the first time you were observing yourself in this position. Be aware of the movement of your breath. Can you perceive your front and your back body working almost evenly as you breathe in so that there's a three-dimensional sensation of breath? And that your back body is just as alive as your front body. You can stay here for a few more moments in Shavasana. Otherwise, awaken your fingertips and your toes. On an inhalation, reach your arms overhead, press forward through your heels, get extra long in your body. And exhale, lower your arms. Bend your knees, place your feet on the floor, and roll over to one side. And take a moment and rest on your arm or on a prop that you have nearby. And feel the breath flowing freely into the back body as it's released from the floor. And using your hand, gently press yourself up into any comfortable seated position. And take your hands, place your hands in front of your heart. And just a moment to reflect on some of the joints that we've worked in the body, noticing how your knees feel, your hips, Your shoulders, wrists, and your spine. And so hopefully those major areas of your body, they don't feel like they're still stuck in one position or the other, but that there's a sense of balance that have come to those joints after practicing Bakasana with its prep and also Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Thank you so much for joining me today